Today we are going to talk about the phenomenon of floating. And we will start with the simplest question. Why are some bodies like this boat able to float and others are not? It may seem that light bodies can float and heavy ones sink. But the boat weighs 200 grams and it floats, whereas this load weighs only 100 grams and still sinks. So what's it all about? The great Archimedes, who considered this problem, reasoned as follows. There is a body that neither sinks nor floats in water. The body is water itself. We can mentally isolate a certain part of water within a vessel. This part will neither sink nor float. What are the forces acting on the body? First of all, it's gravity force, which is directed downwards. Then why does the body not sink down as a result? because buoyancy force acts upon it from within the surrounding water. We call this force Archimedean. Since the body neither floats nor sinks, the two forces balance each other up. Thus, it follows that the Archimedean force equals the weight of the isolated water body. Let us now replace the water body with another one of the same volume but greater weight, which means it is a denser one. The body weight has increased, but the buoyancy force remains the same. Now the gravity force is greater, and the body, which is denser than water, will sink in it. Let us now consider a body of the same volume, the density of which is less than that of water. The Archimedean force remains the same, while gravity force is smaller this time. The Archimedean force is greater, so the body, which is less dense than water, will go up and float on its surface. Let us sum up. If mean body density equals the density of the liquid, the body will be suspended in the depth, neither sinking nor surfacing. If mean body density is greater than that of the liquid, it will sink down to the bottom. And if mean body density is smaller than that of the liquid, it will float up to its surface. Most water creatures have mean body density which is equal to the density of water. Jellyfish mostly consist of water and soar in the surrounding expanses of water. Fish neither float up nor sink, but are suspended in water owing to the air bladder they possess, which is full of air. It compensates for the weight of the bones and other parts of body which are denser than of water. Human body density is close to that of water, so any person can lie flat on their back on water surface, having filled their lungs with air. We have clarified it, why some bodies float in water and others sink. But there is one more question left. How much do the bodies submerge if their density is smaller than that of water, and if they float on its surface? Look at this boat with all of its red part being under water. Why has it sunk to this particular depth? To deal with this issue, we take a light plastic container and put it onto the water. We can see that it hardly sinks at all. So we can neglect the weight of the container in this experiment. Let's pour some colored water inside the container. We see that in the process of pouring, the levels of water within the container and outside it nearly coincide. It all looks like water is floating on water. Now the container has submerged to the level of the blue line and there are 500 cubic centimeters of colored water in it. The mass of each cubic centimeter of water is 1 gram, which means there are 500 grams of water in the container. But is there a difference what to pour into the container? Let us put in 500 grams of brass load weights. The container submerges to the level of the blue line again. So we can conclude that when a body floats on the water surface, it submerges to such a depth that the weight of water in its submerged part equals the body weight. The level of submerging doesn't only depend on the body's density, but also on the density of the liquid it is submerged into. Let us take two identical bodies and put them into liquid media, one of which is denser than the other. The volume of the submerged part will be smaller in the first case and greater in the second one, for the weight of the displaced liquid to equal the body weight in both cases. 
Thus, the density of a liquid can be estimated by the submergence depth of a specific device called a rometer. We have made a film about it, and you can watch it. The level to which the loaded boat submerges is called its flotation line. We already know that this level depends not only on the weight of the boat, but also on the density of the water it floats in. Salty water is denser than fresh water, so in salty water the boat should submerge to a lesser depth. The density of salty water depends both on its salinity and temperature. So the flotation line position will change in different waters in different seasons. Those levels are marked on the so-called plimsoll mark. Tropical fresh water has the smallest density, so the vessel sinks in it deeper than in any other type. Winter North Atlantic water has the greatest density, so the vessel goes up in it to the greatest extent. And now we will put a large chunk of ice into the water tank. We can imagine that it is a kind of iceberg with nine-tenths of its body underneath the water and one-tenth of it above the surface. If we wait until all of the ice melts, do you think the level of water in the tank will change? Share your ideas about it in the commentaries to this video on YouTube.